Hello, uh, it's nice to be here with you on this August Polyglots International Conference. Although I am online, but I am sure I will make some sense about my presentations. Actually, I wanted to be there in person and present what I have written about the Polyglots of Dardistan. But I could not make that in person because of some uh, personal commitments here back at home. I am Zubair Torwali and I am based in Bahrain, Swat, Pakistan. And I have been working on the preservation, documentation and revitalization of the endangered languages of northern Pakistan, which is the greater part of Dardistan. So my paper will have uh, some background information about Dardistan, then the linguistic diversity of Dardistan and uh, short notes on each of the languages spoken in Dardistan. So before going to explain what Dardistan is and how it is a polyglot, let, uh, let's have a look at Pakistan. So um, probably internationally, most of people know Pakistan is a country, uh, as a poor country in the grip of religious extremism and terrorism and uh, in pol political instability <clears throat> and political chaos. But what is uh, usually least known about Pakistan is, is grand linguistic and cultural diversity. And you see in this picture, this is a political official map of Pakistan. So Pakistan is now the fifth greatest country in terms of population and it is the second largest country in South Asia and Pakistan has four provinces and two disputed territories. The provinces uh, from the south you see Balochistan, Sindh, Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Gilgit Baltistan at the extreme north in, and below and beside that is what is known as Kashmir well, the Azad Jammu and Kashmir, which is a disputed area between Pakistan and India. Uh, the people of Pakistan are usually poor and majority, uh, almost more than 40% live below the poverty line. But, but uh, you know that uh, still the people in Pakistan, they do their life uh, somehow uh, although there are hardships they have been facing. So the major ethnic groups in Pakistan are Punjabis, Sindhis, the Pashtuns, Baloch. These are the major ethnic communities in Pakistan. And besides them, there are more than 70 ethnic minor, minority ethnic communities in Pakistan. And they speak endangered languages, which are indigenous as well as endangered. And many of these languages are spoken in the northern parts of Pakistan, which is the greater part of what I have been calling a greater Dardistan. So in Pakistan, according to Ethnologue, there are 77 living languages spoken. And these languages, only seven are usually known in Pakistan and maybe known in uh, known internationally, but uh, my, the majority of the minority languages are not known and they are facing uh, endangerment. So, Dardistan is the region which include uh, the mountain ranges of Hindu Kush, the western Himalaya and the mountain ranges of Karakuram up to the Pamir ranges. So, this uh, Dardistan once it was a geocultural area which ha which is in the northeast uh, north uh, western indian part and which e which used to be and which is now at the crossroads between asia and central asia south asia and central asia the people of the uh, of this regions were called darada or dardik and this tradition has come from the ancient Rigvedic traditions 
uh, the, 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 the Mahabharat and the other ep uh, great epic of uh, uh, India. <clears throat> so, Dardistan is and was the part uh, uh, of the Hindu Kush ranges, the uh, Karakoram and Western Himalaya between Central Asia and South Asia. And and which extended to east, which includes eastern Afghanistan, the entire northern Pakistan, including Gilgit Baltistan, and the Kashmir Valley as well. So, this part was called Dardistan because of the major ethnic group living there, which is known as the Dards, the Radha, or the Dardic people, and who speak uh, the Dardic languages, and they are. In majority in this region that is why uh, one uh, official one uh, researcher with the British uh, uh, Indian government at that time called this place Dardistan and he borrowed this term Dardistan from a Badakhshani a Central Asian historian Sang Muhammad Badakhshi who wrote uh, a history of Badakhshan in Persian language and where he described that beyond Badakhshan, the territory of Dardistan starts. So, this is the, uh, the short introduction of Dardistan, and which it has its greater part in what is now northern Pakistan. So, Dardistan is as a culture area why this uh, territory this uh, uh, territory uh, including the hindu kush the karakoram and western himalaya is called dardistan and how it is a cultural area so a culture area we can say that a culture area is a, a geo cultural a geo uh, geographic or cultural area where the people adhere to the same culture more or less to the same culture so this area the dardic people in, in uh, with the uh, with them the other uh, communities as well we will explain that uh, later on in this presentation they they had a similar culture before islamization of the area in the 16th century so that is why this area is known as the uh, as a cultural area and the famous uh, uh, archaeologist and anthropologist uh, Dr. Carl Jetmar also called this area is uh, a culture area in his uh, research work uh, which he has done in the uh, late uh, 20th century in this area. So uh, the, the, this is a culture area because of the cultural similarities between different linguistic groups living in this area and they used to adhere to a in, in indigenous worldview which is which has its remnant now what is known in the Kalash community which is the only Dardic community in Pakistan which is non-Muslim now <clears throat> and Dardistan is a cult is a linguistic area so by linguistic area there are different uh, definitions uh, we can say the entire South Asia is a linguistic area because of the same uh, language fam uh, languages of the uh, uh, of the same family Indo-European and uh, Indo-Aryan uh, languages and in Dardistan uh, the uh, it is a linguistic area in terms of uh, the many languages so, uh, uh, which are which belong to different uh, phyla the different go language families uh, which are uh, you know which are Indo-Aryan Iranian, Nuristani, Turkic, Sino-Tibetan and Brusheski. So because of uh, the uh, some similarities, some historical contact between these languages, so they have developed uh, uh, some uh, grammatical characteristics and lexical similarities uh, uh, between them although they, uh, they they belong to very different families but majority of these languages is still uh, Indo-Aryan and within the Indo-Aryan uh, it is a uh, uh, you know uh, the Dari group so, so the, the region is home to six language groups namely Indo-Aryan, Iranian, Nuristani all these are Indo-European 
Turkic, Sino Tibetan, and Brusheski. Brusheski is the only language isolated spoken in northern Pakistan in Hunza in Gilgit, Baltistan. The Indo Aryan phylum is the major one with, with about 30 languages, which have also been lumped together as Dardic, Northwestern Indo Aryan, by linguists including John B. Delft, George Grierson, Gerard Fussman, Gerard Morgan Strahan. Uh, Edelman, Richard Strand, Elena Bashir, and Herman Kurzman, etc. The second largest group is Iranian, which is spread over territories of several countries Afghanistan, China, India, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. However, a larger number of these languages are primarily spoken in Pakistan, India, and Afghanistan, with northern Pakistan having more than 30 of, the, of all the 50 languages spoken in entire Dardistan region. So therefore, the studies from here onward focus on the linguistic diversity of Northern Pakistan. As Northern Pakistan is now the greater part of the entire Dardistan region, so I will focus uh, uh, my uh, presentation on the languages uh, of uh, Northern Pakistan. You see the, uh, the topmost uh, green area, what is uh, written as northern areas, uh, this area including the Jammu and Kashmir uh, is the northern Pakistan. So this is a spectacular mountainous area uh, in the north of Pakistan uh, and touching the, uh, in the, Bharat, the, the northern side of Bharat and also uh, the eastern part of Afghanistan and in, and uh, and <coughs> almost reaching uh, reaching into the uh, hub of uh, uh, Central Asia. By North Pakistan, I mean the region of Gilgit Baltistan, the upper parts of Pakistan Northwest Province, that is Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, including which has the districts of Chitral, district of Deer, Swat, Buner, Shangla, Kohista, and Mansera. In the part of Kashmir well under Pakistan control. So that is uh, 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 what I mean by Northern Pakistan. So languages in uh, Northern Pakistan, so, uh, you see in this diagram, there the didactic group of languages, uh, uh, which is the major group here. The second is the Iranian group, then the Nuristani. Nuristani is a uh, uh, the major group, the, the major languages are spoken in the Afghanistan side, then what is called the Nuristan province. Uh, but uh, in Pakistan, two Nuristani languages are spoken. Turkic uh, uh, is uh, uh, has one language here, that, that is Kyrgyz. Balti, the Sino-Tibetan group, uh, it, it has one language in Pakistan, but that is Balti. Uh, the language as well is uh, Brusheski. And the other Indo Aryan languages in northern Pakistan, they are Gujri, Hinko, and Pahari. Uh, so you, you see in the Dardi group, you, you see Bateri, Chiliso, Damili, Dumaki, uh, Gawarbati, Gauri, uh, Gauro, Kalasha, Kalkoti, Kashmiri, Khawar, Kohestani, Kandulshahi, Mankiali, Palula, Shina, Torwali, Oshojo. In Iranian, you, you can see Badeshi, Madakhlashti, Pashto, Sarikuli, Swahi, Yadga, and the Nuristani, Kativiri, and Kamviri. In the Turkic language, we see Kyrgyz, and the Sino Tibetan only Balti. A language isolated is Brusheski, which is behind my video. And other Indo Aryan languages are Gujri, Hinko, Pahari spoken in northern Pakistan. So br a brief notes are, are on these languages will help the audience to know about these languages uh, spoken in northern Pakistan. So the language isolated is of course the Brusheski language which is spoken in the Hunza district of Gilgit, Hunza and Nagar district of Gilgit, Bal, Bal, Gilgit Baltistan in northern Pakistan. Second is the Sino-Tibetan, this is uh, that is Balti language which is, which is spoken in the Skardo area of Gilgit Baltistan. Uh, and the Turkic, uh, the, here is one language, Turkic, that is spoken in northern Pakistan in the Chitral, upper Chitral uh, Valley. Uh, and uh, by a few people, uh, only a few people uh, speak these languages there, the, uh, the, the Kyrgyz language. Now, Nuristani languages. So, Nuristani languages in Pakistan are 
eastern category what is a category is a bigger language spoken in nuristan province but some of uh, people in uh, in chitral they also speak this uh, uh, category language and that is known as the eastern category and this uh, the other is kamviri or shekhani kamviri language is also a nuristani language uh, spoken in uh, parts of uh, chitral in northern pakistan it is also known as shekhani because after the conversion of the people when they were uh, not muslim uh, before the 18th uh, 19th century so they they were called uh, kafirs but when they converted to islam so they were called sheikh 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 is a convert uh, sheikh means a convert so the language is also known, known as shekhani now these are uh, here uh, the, the other languages are iranian the indo iranian languages which is uh, you know madak lashti is spoken in chitral by a small group of people wakhi is spoken in chitral upper chitral uh, as well as in upper gilgit baltistan and the uh, gujal area yidga is another smaller language spoken in chitral by 15 villages and by a few thousand people sarikoli is uh, spoken in the barogol valley in upper chitral by a few uh, hundred people uh, not by hundred but even less than hundred people pashto is uh, you know the one of the major languages spoken in pakistan and uh, pashto is also spoken in northern pakistan in swat in uh, upper uh, in deer in shangla area pashto is also spoken in northern pakistan although all the pashto is also to the south in peshawar valley and as well as kohad and up to uh, uh, dera uh, ismail khan badeshi is uh, is almost a moribund iranian language is it was it uh, was spoken and it is still spoken by a, a few elderly people in the swat valley near my area in madian swat so the uh, dardic languages are here you know the Bateri is a similar language spoken in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in upper in the northern Pakistan in the Kohistan region. Chilaso uh, is also a similar language. The Dameli is spoken in Chitral. It is a Dardic language. It is spoken in Chitral, and you can see some words in Dameli and all uh, uh, all other languages. Dumaki is another language uh, spoken in Hunza. It is a Dardic language by spoken by artisans. Gawarbati is uh, a language spoken on the border of uh, border between Afghanistan and Pakistan in Chitral district so uh, it, it, in the side of Pakistan it is spoken by a smaller number of people uh, about 7000 people or 4000 7, 7 to 8000 people while a larger number about 15000 people speak this language across the border in Afghanistan Gauri is spoken uh, by about 100000 people in upper swat and my area and uh, upper swat also in the upper deer area in northern pakistan gauro uh, is also spoken in kohistan kalasha the famous kalash tribe which is still uh, non muslim and which uh, is still practicing its uh, old religion and Uh, traditions uh, the kalash people so this this language is spoken by those people in three villages and they are very smaller in number only 4000 people now speak this language and and practice this, uh, their their uh, indigenous religion in southern chitral in upper uh, khyber pakhtunkhwa northern pakistan <coughs> kalkoti is another dardic language spoken in Deer area in Upper Deer district, Kashmiri is this uh, a major Dardic language is spoken in the Kashmir or in both side across the line of control between Pakistan and India. Khwar is the major language spoken in the Chitral district. Uh, it is also uh, again a major Dardic languages language. And Kohistani is also known as the as Maya. It is spoken in the Kohistan area on the Karakoram Highway towards Gilgit Baltistan, but it is spoken in the parts of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Kandal Shai is a small uh, language spoken by uh, people of uh, in a small village in uh, AJK and Azad Jammu, uh, Azad Kashmir, in northern Pakistan. 
and Mankiali is another uh, sim, uh, language spoken by 400 people or so in Mansera district in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in northern Pakistan. Palula is another uh, dialect language spoken in Chitral, right uh, in, at the bottom of the uh, famous uh, um, pass uh, over there. Uh, so uh, it is also a dialect uh, language and, and a variety of uh, um, maybe a uh, maybe a greater language Shina. Shina is the uh, major language of Gilgit Baltistan. In uh, among all the Dardic languages, there is much literature found in Shina and in Khawar, and it is uh, perhaps it is the largest Dardic language spoken in Pakistan. Kashmiri used to be the greater uh, Dardic language, because, but uh, majority of Kashmiri is now is spoken in the Indian held Kashmir. Torwali is my mother tongue and it is spoken by 150,000 people in Upper Swat in Bahrain and Chel, Chel area uh, adjacent to the Pashto speaking area as in Swat. Oshojo is a similar Dardic language is spoken by a few uh, hundred only maybe uh, 900 people uh, spoken in the, near my area in the jail uh, jail valley in swat <clears throat> so uh, here i would like to end my presentation this is a small presentation it was and of course uh, uh, it was about the uh, the the languages the linguistic tapestry or the linguistic diversity of dardistan so dardistan as i told before uh, is now is not known well known among academia and among other people but it is a uh, it has been used by the people and now many people uh, in northern pakistan uh, reclaim the dardic identity as well so uh, the Dardic people they they speak the Dardic languages uh, which are in majority in Dardistan. So I call this area Dardistan. Dar the Istan is uh, you know land uh, and are in uh, are habited. This Istan is habited and Dar is the major ethnic group. So this area is. Uh, um, I call it Dardistan, the land of the Dardic people or the Darada people. Um, uh, so the uh, on these languages, you know that no Pakistani has ever ventured to do research on these languages. Uh, even uh, no Pakistani university has ever been able to do a language profile uh, of the uh, this area. In the 80s, uh, the some uh, linguist from international uh, uh, academia and other organizations came to Pakistan and they did a, uh, a a survey on these languages, which they published in five volumes and which is known as the uh, linguistic socio linguistic survey of northern Pakistan and which uh, was published by the the Kaidi Azam University in Islamabad. Uh, in, in in 80s or 90s uh, early 90s so that uh, that is the latest survey done by uh, some people from international academia and organization before that uh, uh, many uh, much of the research work has also been done by um, British uh, scholars when they were with the British government uh, during the British Raj in the subcontinent. So these people uh, were, you know, uh, John Bidulf was a British officer who did a uh, good research on the uh, these ethnic languages and uh, the ethnic communities uh, uh, of Dardistan and Northern Pakistan and published his book, uh, Tribes of Hindu Kush in 1880. And after him, uh, another uh, great uh, linguist uh, which has done a greater, uh, a great survey uh, of the languages of India, uh, which is which is known as Linguistic Survey of India, and where he surveyed and uh, wrote notes on 364 languages of India, and he also wrote uh, a few books. Uh, 
and the languages of uh, uh, this particular uh, area which what is now um, northern pakistan and also the nuristani languages so nuristani languages used to be term as dardic languages and also this man grayerson has done uh, has clubbed has classified those languages and as dardi languages but later on these languages were known uh, by some other uh, scholars as morgan steer and the uh, i think the norway norwegian scholar so he uh, he coined a term kafiri languages for the nuristani languages but later on richard strand another um, great linguist uh, he uh, replaced that kafiri language uh, kafiri term with nuristani languages uh, the people of nuristan uh, they they have the same culture as the people of uh, uh, as the people of uh, the shina people or torwali people or the kohor people of no northern pakistan or the kalasha people so but la the languages are different and maybe uh, and they have uh, they have been classified different uh, Uh, by different scholars and uh, after um, uh, grayerson and morgan steer and uh, there are many other names uh, uh, gerard fussman the german scholar who did some great work on the languages of gilgit baltistan uh, then elena bashir uh, the, from the chicago university he also uh, done some good work on the uh, languages of chitral and karl jetmar Uh, in anthropologist uh, uh, who did uh, um, great research uh, on the anthropology uh, in the society of uh, dardistan which is uh, which was used to be which used to be known as kafiristan as well and uh, two other brother from italy the italian two uh, they are still alive they are uh, the cacopardo Uh, brothers uh, alberto cacoporodo and akas agosto cacoporodo they have done a great uh, ethnographic research uh, especially in chitral in the uh, and uh, also on the kalash people and the dhamili people and the entire uh, dardistan Dard region they term this uh, they coin another term a uh, fascinating term for the region of dardistan uh, uh, which they call paristan pari means ferry Uh, is it is a persian word peri means ferry so uh, the, the land of ferries and because uh, the indigenous world view of these people um, uh, was mostly uh, mostly uh, you know uh, mo mostly uh, what we can say uh, had mostly the ferries and jinns and demons uh, In, in their traditions so he he coined these brothers coined this term paristan for this region and this region was uh, called kafiristan by the uh, central asian and iranian or the pashtun scholars who came to this area in 16 uh, early 16 and then uh, afterwards because these people uh, they were not, not hindus they were not uh, christians they were not buddhist they had their own uh, indigenous traditions and indigenous world view uh, world view or religion so because they 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 term them as kafirs kafirs means pagan unbelievers so uh, this area was uh, named by them as kafiristan the land of kafirs but but uh, um leitner gb the gottlieb uh, wilhelm leitner who was uh, a british officer and he was uh, uh, an orientalist and indologist uh, based in lahore and he spent some time in gilgit baltistan as well as a political agent there so he uh, did a, uh, some good research on the races and languages of dardistan by the, uh, he wrote uh, a few books and one book was uh, Uh, published in 1861 uh, and which uh, was the races and languages of dardistan so he preferred the name dardistan and he borrowed it from that uh, badakhshani scholar sang mohammad badakhshi who wrote the history of uh, badakhshan and persian and uh, he uh, termed this area as dardistan the the land of the darada people or the dardic uh, people <coughs> the eth the ethno um, the anthropologist uh, um, frederick barth 
who has done greater research on the Pashtun sociology and anthropology but he has also touched uh, some of the communities of this area as my Torwali community as well as the Kohistan communities and others communities he also did uh, some good research on the sociology and anthropology of these people and recently uh, <coughs> uh, some scholars from uh, again from Europe and from uh, America came to the area to uh, do research for their uh, PhD or master thesis and they established some they trained the, uh, the, the, the language community people uh, to in order to um, do the language revitalization work so since uh, uh, the millennium I mean 2000 uh, uh, CE uh, the, the people from some activist language activists from these communities have started work uh, on their uh, languages uh, they did some research pre preliminary research they developed orthographies they developed writing script uh, for the, the these languages mostly the scripts are based on arabic uh, script because uh, people uh, are muslim and they used to read uh, the holy quran so in the and some of these communities also established the uh, early education school system in their languages for example uh, we established uh, the Torwali multilingual education program in the our area and we established the organization and similarly many other uh, people uh, from many other language communities in Gilgit, Bal Gilgit Baltistan in Chitral in also in Kohistan they established similar community based organizations to do work on their languages and culture so um, uh, for two decades now people have been doing some revitalization of work on their languages still we have to go a long way because in the pakistani government do does not recognize these languages as official or pakistani languages or national languages uh, although in the in the education policies of uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, the, the province where uh, we uh, live, uh, they have uh, chalked out some policy to um, to teach uh, some of these uh, languages in the primary school and they call them regional languages even though this term is also uh, an ambiguous uh, term still uh, they are uh, they have passed some laws to do that but the on the ground there is less work done on those languages so in pakistan urdu is the official uh, the the national language language and of course uh, english is the official language so this is these are the uh, overall language attitudes and language policies in pakistan uh, and the other issue these people the the Dardic people were colonized domesticated and brutally colonized in the uh, first in the 10th and 11th century then in the 16th century mostly by invaders from iran iranian or central side uh, or afghanistan side and their languages and cultures and even their histories were dominated and they lost uh, much of their history much of their uh, languages and also uh, you know their identity so what we have been doing in here in swat so on the one hand we have been writing our language we have been teaching it uh, in schools uh, uh, privately we have been teaching it to our kids we have been writing books uh, in this language for adults uh, we have been developing some software uh, in keyboards for uh, to this language uh, uh, but on the other hand we have also been uh, engaged in documenting the ancient history the folklore the folk poetry the folk tales uh, uh, and publish those in books uh, and also make videos of uh, of the songs of the uh, the, the, the ancient songs uh, and we have also been doing some uh, work on the uh, and, and the identity and history and reclaiming the ethnic identity 
so most of these you know the the dardic people the, the some of them are called many of them are called kohestani are term uh, mountains dwellers uh, are term imposed on them by the pashtun invaders or the they were under the influence of the uh, mughal dynasty and uh, which had persian as its official language and uh, because of those uh, that uh, 500 colonization and now the internal colonization and cultural domination these uh, dardic communities have been losing not only their languages their cultures but as their identity as well uh, but wa- what we have been resisting and what we have we, we have been resisting the the colonizers Uh, imperative of the colonizers image and creating our own history not creating but writing and doing research on our own history and reclaiming our own identity and also revitalizing our own languages so i hope uh, i have for talked too much uh, i hope this uh, will work for you and if you have any questions uh, Uh, i will be present uh, at the time of the presentation of, of, of running up this uh, these my, the, my 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 slides so i uh, will be trying to meet some of your questions over there and i am uh, again sorry i could not make it in person and i am again sorry that i could not make uh, uh, you know a uh, a uh, stage presentation because i uh, i do not have uh, that facility and my friends left uh, uh, for another international conference uh, out of country so that uh, that's why i did not have any assistant to help me in the video making uh, thank you for that and thank you so much this is my email zatorwali@gmail.com and you can see below that is the uh website of my organization ibtnorthpakistan.org it is the organization we have established in 15 years ago and we have been doing work on under this organization <coughs> and we have although we are focused on our torwali language but uh, we have also been working on the other languages of dardistan especially on the dardic and other languages of northern pakistan So here I end my presentation, and I hope I made some sense. There might I expect many questions because uh, it's perhaps the first uh, international uh, presentation from Pakistan in the Polyglot Conference series. So I will try to be there with you on the day of the presentation. Thank you so much. I am Zubair Torwali. I am a um, ethnic torwali as well as i speak torwali language thank you